everyone as i just told you we've been talking about her she is divya here and uh, recently scored a 770 as you can see 18th of may that's not too long ago but still some time back and uh, very very happy and proud that uh, divya could come here as well and at the same time she could score 770 the stuff of dreams definitely and she was referred to by a few friends of hers harjas you all heard so harjas is a friend and uh, obviously everybody goes through uh, ups and downs struggles of preparation but finally when one triumphs i think it is worth a celebration yes hey divya hi finally we get to talk like this yeah i don't think we have spoken in this fashion earlier so yeah. i also remember before your exam you were a little anxious and you wanted really some guidance and i told you specifically what to do so let's start from there anything that any tips that helped you really please let us know sure sure oh uh, okay so i think uh, i wanted to actually speak about specific aspects of my preparation and how particularly top one percent help uh in terms of verbal quant but Equally importantly is time management. I think mm -hmm. the last time sir, I spoke to you, I, I was struggling very, very uh, hard on time management and I was trying my best, but somehow mm -hmm. it didn't happen. I think magical words that sir has said, and I'm sure he has said to you several times, but I want to reiterate because, I mean, I just want to become like a testimonial for everyone on this call to follow mm -hmm. sir's advice. Um, top three things were one is uh long sittings uh i know that whole thing sounds like super extreme and it's very rigorous but yeah i can guarantee because i uh particularly it was rc and cr only that i struggled with the most and mm -hmm. i think it was only sitting for three four hours continuously over weekends and weekends over weekends uh that i could really not only bring up my accuracy but also improve my time substantially. The amount mm -hmm. of time that I started taking was so less that I could manage the SC section way, way better. So I think the biggest, biggest point that I want to make today is do those long sittings for RC, but also for CR, mm -hmm. not for as long as RC, but definitely do at least one to two hours of long sittings to CR. I think it's a game changer for verbal. You're going to feel so much better. Uh, another aspect that I think, sir, you mentioned before my exam and I started prepping in that direction was um, taking those subsectionals that are there on your portal, uh, the top 1% portal. I think trying to time yourself correctly through those exams is, again, something that will, uh, you know, change everything for you. Uh, whether it is quant or it's verbal, I know both, both of those sections on the exam uh, on the portal are slightly tough, but at the same time, it's extremely important. And all of those questions are very, very good to understand where your gaps are and where you can improve. So I think both of these things, the long sittings and the subsectional, uh, right. Both will help to improve accuracy and uh, reduce your time, which is going to be a game changer. Right. Uh, Divya, just going back a little, uh, when you started, what were your challenge areas in the beginning? Was it quant? Was it only speed in quant or quant? Because you do not come directly from a, an engineering background. So I'm asking, maybe you are good at math, maybe you're not, but just asking, was SC a big challenge in terms of concepts and understanding RCCR? The study part of it, could you take us through each yeah. of these four areas one by one? Sure, sure. Um, so I think I struggled more with RC and CR and less with quant and SC. Okay. But the struggle was there regardless. Uh, for I think uh, RC and CR, as I said, the long sittings were the game changer. For right. quant and SC, I think they were more conceptual in nature. And mm -hmm. uh, I mean, the struggle wasn't as bad as RC and CR for me, but it was definitely there. What right. really helped, and again, I'm saying this, I'm pretty sure Sarah has said this multiple times, but the starting from the basics video, because it's a very concept heavy uh, subject. In fact, both of them, Quant and SC, starting from the basics video, going through the pre-work, going through the post-work, and then moving on to practice. I think that's how I could scale that gap uh, mm -hmm. that I had in my SC and Quant. Right. And uh, towards the end, which 
kind of content did you study? Which materials did you do? All the stuff that we say, even in PDFs or only the portal, and what part helped you the most? Just let me know. Sure, sir. I think firstly I would like to say since everyone on this call is enrolled with top one percent, guys, don't look beyond top content. Don't confuse yourself. You have literally the cream of content out there in your hands now. Don't don't look beyond it. Uh, for me, particularly, as I said, there are around, uh, you know, 15 quant sections and then there are some 25 verbal or is the other way around. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, I was very, very particular about those. I think going through them allowed me to keep in touch with, uh, you know, quant and verbal on weekdays, especially that I would take one mm -hmm. at least every day. Right. And uh, the the because there are such good questions i think even analyzing the wrong questions out of those 30 35 questions mm -hmm. i think that gave me like every question was so deep that it gave me a very good understanding of where my gaps are every time right, i would right. analyze it right so, and uh, your exam experience prior to that if there were some mocks you wrote what were the indicative of the performance you would have got or uh, and uh, eventually your exam so let's start from mocks and then go to the exam sure um i think when i started off before top one percent i was at a baseline of about i think 700 and mm -hmm. uh but the i think over a span of a few months only um mm -hmm. i could go from about 700 to 770 um Particularly, I think my biggest difference, as I said, came from getting RCs right. And towards right. the end, uh, the long sittings helps us so much, by the way, that uh, I got a V44 and I had a 100% on my RC. So, oh, wow. You checked your ESR for that reason? Yes, yes, I checked my ESR and I realized that I think my accuracy in RC when I started off was, I think, close to 60 to 70%. I was really mm -hmm. bad at it. And I think because I would get consecutively many, many questions wrong, like three to four questions wrong, right. I'd get all the RCs. Uh, not only would I get like low score because of low accuracy, but also because of the consecutive time mistakes yeah, as well. Yeah. Right. So I think RCs are improved substantially from like 60, 70% to 100%. Uh, again, that was a great. A uh, game changer. Then there was, I think, SC, which was um, not like I used to take a lot more time. And I think so are your concepts, particularly, you know, how to identify that, okay, this is mm -hmm. being tested and, you know, this is how you eliminate. Okay. Um, that helped me reduce my time substantially. So That's those right. two problem areas got uh, covered very easily. On mm -hmm. quant front, I felt um, particularly, you know, things like geometry coordinate geometry or mm -hmm. it was probability pnc these were some tough areas which i think happened to be the problem area for everyone from my peers right. also, right. i think these are the four areas which happen to be problem areas but again i think my accuracy in all of these was again close to 90 percent and uh, i mm -hmm. think uh, while on others it was 100 percent. so i think it got set off but I think my starting point in all of these was also around uh, 60, 70%. So right. that is where I think a good, good, uh, you know, improvement in my score came. Okay. Divya, one very important thing. What was your exam experience like? Uh, did you have anything unusual? Did you have nerves, anxiety? Was there anything unusual about the questions also? And about the way you reacted to the questions? Please tell us. Sure, sure. I think my exam experience was... Uh, I mean, I think jitters before exams are only natural and mm -hmm. everyone, no matter how prepared you are, you will feel them. Mm -hmm. uh, I did not feel like I was at my best on my exam day, even though I think in hindsight, I really was. But mm -hmm. before the exam was like, so my palms were sweaty. That is how nervous I was. <laughs> okay. uh, I think the, the moment I started the exam, I think because my mind had been trained through all of those subsectionals, I, I think my mm -hmm. mind naturally been trained to think of timing, right? And, you know, follow a pattern mm -hmm. for every question. The right. moment after like the first two questions, I was all in. Mm -hmm. And I don't even remember being nervous or anything because I was so engaged in the exam. And that could only happen because I had taken so many of the top 1% mocks before Right, that. right, right. So, yeah, that was definitely 
did you see anything unusual in this on the question front let's say that okay this question doesn't seem solvable unusual different anything like that i don't think so sir because i think uh, i well, you were in a flow state so i don't think you even recall it right now yeah that's right yeah. but yeah you it if it were not the case you would probably recall it that you got stuck on a question or that Definitely. this happened no i think uh, verbal especially because i had stuck with your ideology of uh, mm -hmm. taking up rcs from lsats etc mm -hmm. so i think because i done that level of practice nothing on the exam seemed unusual even for quant because the question sets that you know those 700 to 800 sets mm -hmm. that we used to practice uh, they were so uh, you know such such good questions again that i don't think there was anything on the exam that felt like oh i have never seen this before or i don't know how to do this okay great and uh, now that you got the score what's the plan which schools are you applying and uh, um, what's the definitely. process have you started thinking or will you start now uh, i have just started on the process i will be applying in the first round i am yet to finalize schools but definitely hoping for the best uh, m7s or top 10s at least and uh, yeah i'll take it as it comes you have about 5 years of experience if i'm not maybe 6 right okay. no no uh, i have about 5 4 to 5 years yeah 5 years uh, roughly all right absolutely awesome to know your story divya and the challenges that you had and uh, obviously there are many ups and downs some people genuinely feel that you know you have to take a break from work or you really have to study 12 hours a day how did you manage your days that is one question everybody has problem so if you could answer sure no i think uh, i had a slightly atypical uh, journey when it comes to taking time off of work i taken quite a lot of time off for personal reasons earlier so i couldn't afford to take more time off of work uh, because of which i think my journey was slightly more prolonged um i would do i think one to two hours on a week day or actually two to three hours on a week day but i would maximize on my weekends wherein i would go at least like seven to eight hours i would do uh, yeah. of practice but doing that on the weekends uh, i couldn't take time off of work as i said i took it on a thursday i was working on a on the previous wednesday also i was working so it was not like i had to take but you don't have to take time off of work really if you have the means to afford it but if you're in a rush i think doing it after your classes maybe a month or two with 15 days at the end uh are taken off of work i think that can really help so yeah, yeah but so both ways it works it either it's a little prolonged or it take yeah it but it's not necessary for sure just tell me the experience of the long sittings that you did on weekends was did it feel that okay five days i have not done long sitting so was it like out of character so that oh i did it let's say seven days ago and now i'm practicing again or did you develop that rhythm that you wanted just by practicing only on the weekends so um there was never a single day i think that i did not do anything uh during the week i would take sub sectionals those mocks mm -hmm. uh so that i'm at least in touch with those octave mm. concepts and uh, rcs everything in fact yeah yeah but over the weekend yes the the muscle develops so uh, you know in, instinctively that you don't even get to know but you only see it in hindsight that oh, i've done it for 3 to 4 hours for like 2 weeks now i mean by by that i mean like both saturday and sunday i've done it mm -hmm. it changes like the i think the fourth weekend that you sit you realize that damn i've really really you know increased my flow yeah. and uh, it 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 can happen if you just give it the weekends but also stay in touch with the concepts during the week all right uh, thanks a lot divya i think any special tip for people they should do this they shouldn't do this because now on the other side you can definitely as a student we all have our journeys but if you say that don't do these three things or do these three things what would they be please tell I think I've covered it, uh, but I will say again: long sittings, subsectional tests. Uh, but the third tip, I will go a little metaphorical and say, I will a little meta and say that uh, there will be times when you will not have the ac accuracy that you really need or you want. But mm -hmm. to not take things personally, I think is a big challenge that I faced. That I I would you know get disheartened very quickly. But uh, because you are you know exposing yourself to the most the, to the toughest questions out there you will definitely face that that you know you 
that challenge of doubting yourself but i think going back into top 1% uh, you know techniques and methodologies uh, will get you there there is no way that you follow these concepts you follow sir's advice of long sittings etc and that you can't make it that will not happen so just trust perfect. that process perfect perfect so shouldn't do should do i think is more or less the same then <laughs> Yeah. Definitely, yeah. All right, all right. Before you apply, do go through the Know the World series whenever you can, because this will really, really help you. You know, tell your goals in a very different way and look at the world, in fact, in a very different way. So whenever you get the time, I know you'll be very, very busy now that you once again are back to work in that with that intensity. But still, do find the time. I hope uh, everything has worked out eventually, and all's mm -hmm. well that ends well, right? All Definitely. the very best for your application. Thank you so much, sir. Thank All you. Bye-bye. Yeah. Bye.